Hello class, this is a video recording of chapter 9 of the personal finance text and the chapter is titled buying a home buying a home the house has had a dual finance role as both a nest and a nest egg and these are the learning objectives for this particular chapter define the different building structures for residential dwellings describe the different ownership structures identify the factors used by lenders to evaluate borrowers for mortgage credit Identify the components of the mortgage affordability calculation and calculate estimated mortgage affordability. Identify the components of a buyer's inspection checklist. Explain the potential effects of business cycles, unemployment, and inflation on the housing market. Analyze the effects of the market for housing financing on the housing market. Identify the product and the market, renting versus owning. Um, and there are some advantages to both. Um, and I'll read these and I'll also give you my insights as well. So then renting has some advantages. Limited financial obligation, uh, limited maintenance expenses, more liquidity, and more mobility. Sometimes this isn't always the case, but in most cases that is true. Uh, limited financial obligation, sometimes owning could be less expensive than renting if all goes well um, usually maintenance expenses are incurred by the landlord not by you as the person who um, is, is renting the apartment or the home more liquidity not not in every case because sometimes um, month to month you could end up paying more in rent than you would if you had a mortgage uh, but you definitely have more mobility because you could move from one unit to another without, um, you know, having to sell the unit that you're in. The disadvantages is that there's no equity or growth to store or store a value, although there are some companies such as Equity Residential, for example, that has um, not, not specifically rent to own, but they give you like credits towards a, a purchase of a home in the future. Sometimes there's lifestyle limitations, so if you have pets, um, smoking, um, etc., you can't do that sometimes when you're renting, so no smoking inside the apartment. If you have a cat or a dog um, and the owners don't allow it, you can't have them. Decorating and renovating limitations, this usually applies more to fixtures, so um, it'll be highlighted in the lease that, like, for example, you can't change the refrigerator if you don't like it. You can't change the ceiling fan if you don't like it. Um, and there's a less predictable housing expenses <laughs> when you're renting. Owning, there's a store of value and possible equity growth. Uh, lifestyle choices are another advantage. Decorating and renovating choices, pride of ownership, uh, tax deduction for mortgage in interest, and more predictable housing expenses. Uh, although not really, because let's say a hurricane hits and your your home suffers damage um, in some cases renting the, the responsibility of fixing the home could fall into the lap of the landlord or the the leasing company but if you own your own home you, you know d depending on the situation and depending on the conditions of the insurance that you have on your house if a hurricane hits and your home gets destroyed you may be liable for a portion of that or like if you were flooded and you didn't get flood insurance because you're not in a flood zone or your, ins you, your insurance company would not insure you because you are not in a flood zone then you, you may also um, have to come up with some expenses yourself so more predictable housing expenses maybe but I wouldn't really put it there as a total advantage some disadvantages is that there's a substantial financial obligation. It's a really big commitment. Significant annual expenses. There's less liquidity and less mobility. So you got to stay. Um, unless you're owning and you're, you, you're renting out the units, then that's different. <laughs> Identify the product. Assessing the attributes. How large a house? How many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? These are questions you want to know. Which rooms are most important? Kitchen, family room, home office, etc. Which ones are important to you? Do you need parking or garage? Do you need storage space? 
do you need disability accommodation? So all of these questions you want to know because sometimes you may, um, if you're in, in a very metropolitan area uh, such as New York City or or like downtown Miami, for example, they, there may not be disability accommodations or you might not get a garage. Uh, so you just have to assess what's important to you. You want to know, do you want outside space, a yard, a patio, or a deck? Is that important to you? How important is privacy? Do you want a standalone house or do you want a townhouse? And it, is, is it okay if you hear your neighbors sometimes? How important is energy efficiency and other green features? Do you have solar panels, etc.? How important are the design features and the appearance of the house? How important is the location and environmental factors? How close is it to work, school, shopping, and family and friends? Um, you can have a single unit dwelling, multiple unit dwelling, a mobile home, condominium, or cooperative housing. Assessing affordability, most people use financing to purchase a home, so your ability to access financing or get a loan will determine the price range of the house you can buy. <laughs> so uh, when we're looking at a mortgage lender, they look at outstanding debt, your credit history, your credit score, your gross income, um, and then um, your income as a percentage of gross income, and which is based on the down payment, the income level, and the credit score as well. So then there's like a, a whole uh, debt to, um, you know, debt to cash ratio, so to speak, that, that the mortgage lenders calculate in order to determine how much money you're going to be paying every month. <clears throat> so for instance, you have, uh, let's say you have a gross annual income of 60000 gross monthly income of, of 5000 6000 divided by 12, uh, other debt payments, um, 1900 or 1900 I should be speaking properly, equals 38% of 5000 Other debt payments, 200 which is an estimate of affordable um, monthly, uh, 1700 Then you have monthly taxes, insurance, affordable monthly mortgage payment, mortgage factor, affordable, a mortgage down payment as a percentage of purchase price, mortgage as a percentage of purchase price, and the, then you finally have your affordable purchase price. So this is this is kind of like a not not entirely, but in part, kind of the idea of how um, you are assessed on how much you can afford. Searching for a home inspection checklist: you have structural elements, foundation floors, wall ceilings, and roof. Exterior elements or siding, uh, fascia, trim, windows, doors, elevation, drainage, landscaping, pool, driveways, and sidewalks. Roof and attic, um, if you have an attic. Framing, ventilation, flashing, and gutters. Plumbing, pipes, po uh, potable drain, waste, and vent. Toilets, showers, sinks, faucets, and traps. Electrical, main panel, circuit breakers, wiring, and fixtures. Systems, furnace, water heater, air conditioner, ducts, chimney, and sprinklers and outdoor buildings such as garage, tool shed, and pool house. Um, and then if you live in colder environments, you also want to um, know about boilers and, and, um, and natural gas systems as well. Make sure that those are safe because you don't want your home to have uh, any sort of accidents, um, which, which could happen. Identifying the product and the market, key takeaways, different building structures are single unit or multiple unit dwellings or mobile homes and are either owned, new, or custom built. Different ownership structures include conventional ownership, condominium, or cooperative housing. The buyer's inspection checklist includes structural elements, exterior elements, systems for plumbing, electrical heating, and cooling, outdoor buildings, and features. Lenders assess income, current debts, and credit history to determine the credit worthiness of borrowers. Um, mortgage affordability estimate down payments as a percentage so all of these things are, are taken into account like how I showed you in the in in the previous slide that there's a, a model or, or somewhat of um, of an idea of what the uh, the lenders use as a as a method of assessing how much you're able to afford housing prices may be affected by business cycles as they affect unemployment income levels Inflation, which affects not only the cost of houses, but interest rates and the cost of home financing. So there's also outside factors that influence the cost of your house. 
Housing prices are affected by the availability of home financing, which in turn depends on interest rates and inflation and liquidity uh, in credit markets. Identifying financing, learning objectives. Define the effects of the down payment and other housing. Calculate the monthly mortgage payment given its interest rate, maturity, and principal balance. Distinguish between fixed rate and adjustable rate mortgage and explain their effects on the monthly payment and interest rate. Distinguish between a cap rate and payment cap and explain their uses and risks. Determine the effect of points on the monthly mortgage payment. And lastly, identify potential closing costs. Identifying the finance. Just as your house may be your most significant purchase, your mortgage may be your most significant debt. The principal may be many times one year's disposable income and may need to be paid off over 15 or 30 years. The house uh, secures the loan, so if you default or miss any payments, the lender may foreclose on your house or claim ownership of the property, evict you, resell the house, and recover what you owed. And even if they do that, sometimes you may still even owe, even though you don't live in the house or own the house. Uh, the size of the down payment does not affect the price of the house, but it can affect the cost of the financing or the monthly payments every month. For a certain house price, the larger the down payment, the smaller the mortgage, and all things being equal, the lower the monthly payments. So this is just an example. Um, if the purchase price of a house you want to buy is $250,000, if you put a 5% down payment, your mortgage is um, going to be $237,500 with a mortgage rate of 5%. Your, your payments are going to be 989 so now if we look, uh, if you put 20%, for example, uh, that's going to be a $200,000 mortgage. So you're putting a $50,000 a fifty dollar down payment. Your mortgage rate is 5%. Your monthly mortgage payments are $833.33. And lastly, if your purchase price is $250,000 and you put 50% down, this is not likely but or typical, but... That means that you're financing the other half, which is uh, $125,000 at a 5% mortgage rate. Your monthly mortgage payments are going to be $520.83. So there's an opportunity cost or somewhat of a trade-off. Uh, private mortgage insurance, closing costs, renovations, and repairs, and um, with the down payment. The monthly payment is the ongoing cash flow obligation of the loan. If you don't pay this payment, you're in default on the loan and you may eventually lose the house with no compensation for the money you have already put into it. Your ability to make the monthly payment determines your ability to keep the house and its equity. A fixed rate mortgage is structured as an annuity, regular periodic payments of equal amounts. Some of the payment is repayment of the principal and some of it is the interest expense. And it kind of looks like, um, like two overlapping triangles when you look at... Um, at the how they divide up the payments in the beginning you're going to pay a lot more interest towards the middle there's a switch and then towards the end you're paying more principal as you make the payment your balance gets smaller so the interest loan interest portion of your next payment is smaller the principal payment is larger in other words as you continue making payments you're paying off the balance of the loan faster and less of your payments is interest so it's just an example um, if you see that this is a year your, month, your payments are going to be the same, $1,264.14, but the, the amount of principal and the amount of interest that you're paying varies, right? So this is on a balance of $200,000, and even though you see, like, it's, it's obvious from here that you're paying a little more, you're paying more than $10,000, definitely, right? But your balance doesn't necessarily decrease ten thousand dollars and the reason for this is that the banks want to get paid the interest first so um, in my opinion this is not very typical because this is um, th they would normally take a lot more of the payment um, in interest in the very beginning assuming this is payment one um, but as you can see as you move forward in time the interest payments are less and less and the principal pay, uh, pay it goes up a little more as time progresses. Monthly mortgage payments can be estimated using the mortgage factor. The mortgage factor is a calculation of the payment per 1,000 of the mortgage loan given the interest rate 
and the maturity of the mortgage. So the mortgage factor times the principal divided by 1,000. So here's an example um, of a mortgage rate at 0 0.04 or 4%. Uh, 30 year, $4.77, 20 year, $6.06, $6 and 15 year, uh, $7.40. And then if you move down, um, obviously the higher the, the, the rate, the more you're going to pay. At 7%, uh, 30 year, $6.65. 20 years, $7.75, 15 years, $8.99. Identifying the mortgage design. So mortgage structures could be in the form of a fixed rate, adjustable rate, which I highly suggest you avoid, balloon, which you, I think you should avoid, the home equity loan, which I think is best for emergencies, home equity line of credit, same, and then the reverse mortgage, which is for older folk. Um, so the fixed rate is the one that we saw, like here, for example. This is a perfect example of a fixed rate mortgage. You know exactly how much you're going to pay. You don't. You might not know how the the payment is divided, but at least you know that it's going to be the same. Now, when you're doing an adjustable rate mortgage, there are variables beyond your control that will influence that the price, and it's um it, it's it's one of those things that in Broward County and in, in in our here here in Florida that has um, unfortunately caused a very big dent in the, the local economy. A lot of people in the late 90s and early 2000s were pretty much scammed into adjustable rate mortgages because they, because they all had the vision and the desire of owning a home. And um, what they didn't expect is that their mortgage was going to triple and they were not able to pay it. Um, the balloon is almost similar, but you can do a little bit more research on that. Fixed rate is the way to go. Okay. Uh, and for adjustable rates, you have rates, caps, and payment caps. Uh, points are another kind of financing cost. One point is 1% of the mortgage. Points are paid to the lender as a form of a prepaid interest when the mortgage originates and are used to decrease the mortgage rate. So in other words, paying points is a way of buying a lower mortgage rate. So let's say uh, zero points, mortgage rate of 6.5%, mortgage factor $6.32, uh, $6.32. The monthly payment is $1,264. If you uh, buy two points, you get a mortgage rate of 6%, mortgage factor of $6, and then your payment goes down to $1,200. So the lower the monthly um, payment if you uh, per have higher points or you purchase more points. Identifying the financing, closing cost. So closing costs uh, include appraisal, title search, title insurance, filing fee, and property transfer tax. The, percent, the percentage of the purchase price paid up front as the down payment will determine the amount that's borrowed. That principal balance on the mortgage in turn determines the monthly mortgage payment. A larger down payment may, take, may make the monthly payment smaller, but creates the opportunity cost of losing liquidity. A fixed rate mortgage is structured as an annuity. The monthly mortgage payment can be calculated from the mortgage rate, the maturity, and the principal balance on the mortgage. A fixed rate mortgage has a fixed mortgage rate and fixed monthly payments. An adjustable rate mortgage may have an adjustable mortgage rate and or adjustable payments. A rate cap or payment cap may be used to offset the effects of an adjustable rate mortgage on monthly payments. Points are borrowing costs paid up front rather than over the maturity of the mortgage. Closing costs are transaction costs such as an appraisal fee, title search, and title insurance, filing fees for legal documents, transfer taxes, and sometimes, sometimes retailers' commissions also. Uh, learning objectives, owning your home, identify the components of a purchase and sales agreement, explain the importance of a capital budget in determining capital spending priorities, identify the financing events you may encounter during the maturity of a mortgage, define the borrower and lender's responsibility to the mortgage, and explain the consequences of a default and a foreclosure. So purchase and sale is a legal description of the property, the sale price and deposit amount, a mortgage contingency, the closing date and location, conveyances or any agreements made as part of the offer, a home inspection contingency, possession date, usually the closing date, a description of the property insurance policy that will cover the home until the closing date. Uh, so capital expenditures, you have repairs and renovations, um, while you own, there's early repayment and refinancing. 
um, when there's less interest paid, there's more opportunity cost. If the lower, if if you lower the interest rate, then there's more closing cost. More closing cost. Mm, I'd say not in every situation. Purchasing and owning default foreclosure and fraud. So then default foreclosure and eviction. That's usually the process. You default first, and then you're foreclosed on, and then you're evicted from the property. The purchase and sales agreement details and uh, the conditions of the sale. Conditions of the purchase and sale agreement must be met before the closing. A capital budget can help you prioritize and budget for capital expenditures. Early payment is the trade-off of interest expense versus the opportunity cost of losing liquidity. Refinancing is the trade-off between lower monthly payments and closing costs. Both borrowers and lenders have a responsibility to understand the terms of the mortgage. Buyers, sellers, lenders, and brokers must be alert to predatory lending, real estate scams, and possible cases of mortgage fraud. Default may result in the lender foreclosing on the property and evicting the former homeowner. And that essentially sums up our chapter 9, buying a home, of the personal finance text. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to contact me at any time. Thanks for watching.